Heracles has just handed over the girdle of Hippolyta to King Eurystheus and his daughter. After some short travels to deliver a few of his other Amazon spoils, he returns to Eurystheus for labour number 10. For the tenth labour, Heracles is tasked to steal the famous cattle of Geryon. Geryon is the king of Erythea, and reputedly the strongest man in the world. He is a warrior of unforgettable composition, said to be comprised of three bodies joined at the hips, with six arms, six legs, and three heads. This king is the son of Chryseor, the man with the golden sword. On this side of his lineage, he is grandson to Medusa and Poseidon, as well as nephew to Pegasus. On his mother's side, he is the grandson to the Titan Oceanus, and brother to the mother of monsters, Echidna. Geryon's 1,000 cattle have striking red fur, and are greatly prized for their beauty. It is not unsurprising to our hero that Eurystheus would ask for such an exuberant gift. Making Heracles' task even more difficult is the fact that this vibrant cattle is shepherded by other deific figures. Eurytion, the giant son of Ares, shepherds the cattle on Geryon's behalf. Orthrus, the two-headed son of Typhon and Echidna, and brother to Cerberus, acts as a watchdog for the animals. The journey to Erythea is Heracles' longest yet. After slaying a few beasts and roaming Libya, one of the first stops on Heracles' path to Erythea is Tartessus. Tartessus is near modern-day Gibraltar in Spain. It is at this place that the son of Zeus forms two gigantic mountains that today appear on opposite sides of Gibraltar's strait. One in Europe, one in Africa. In the most common version, Heracles cuts a colossal channel through the previously joined state of both mountains to separate the two continents. Other tales see Heracles building the mountains himself to simply commemorate his journey. In one variation, he actually narrows the strait instead of widening it to dissuade whales and other large animals from entering into it. In antiquity, we can find the pillars of Heracles mentioned many times. For instance, in Dante's Inferno, one sinner describes the pillars as part of his seaward path to the island of Purgatory. Sometime during Heracles' path through the deserts of Libya and Spain, Helios pours down plentiful heat onto our toiling and frustrated hero. Heracles reacts angrily by aiming his bow into the sky and threatening to fire arrows at Helios. Realizing his misplaced rage, our hero quickly apologizes, and in gracious response, Helios provides him with his own goblet. The goblet is shaped like a water lily and perfect for use as a raft. Riding the goblet on water is actually the method that Helios himself uses to travel back east after setting in the west. Our hero sails to Erythea, riding atop the goblet of Helios. He encounters discord in the ocean stream, roiled up by its titan lord Oceanus. The son of Zeus aims his bow at this titan as well, and Oceanus calms the waters to not incur Heracles' wrath. Heracles is finally at the island, ready to steal away Geryon's herd and hopefully move on to labour number 11 unhindered. He first makes towards a mountain and begins a long and arduous climb to its peak. Just as he makes it to the apex of the mountain, Orthrus, brother to Cerberus, leaps out to attack our hero. Orthrus snarls and barks at him from both mouths, bearing razor-sharp teeth and inching closer to bite and maim him. Heracles clutches his mighty club and swings at the rabid canine as it launches at him, crushing Orthrus's skulls 
and killing him easily. Curiously, whilst many sources agree on the manner in which Heracles dispatched Orthrus, some of the oldest art of the event depicts Orthrus as pierced by Heracles' arrows instead. Eurytion appears next, drawn by the noise of the fighting before. His pet Orthrus lay splayed at the foot of Heracles, and the son of Ares cries out in fury. Eurytion strikes at Heracles, but again our hero easily dispatches his foe with his great club. At this point, it is clear that the son of Zeus is beginning to cause quite a ruckus on the mountain. He immediately makes to shimmy away Geryon's cattle, but in the distance, someone has witnessed his violence against the herdsman and his dog. Menoetes, herdsman to the cattle of Hades, is within eyeshot, and he rushes to the side of Geryon to report what he has seen. Geryon is not too pleased to hear what Menoetes has to say. Geryon makes to do battle with Heracles, his six legs vaulting and running to where he knew his cattle to be. Heracles reacts instantly, dodging the strongest man in the world and firing a single arrow into his flank. The arrow pierces all three of Geryon's bodies at once, corrupting them with the deadly poison of the Hydra. Geryon collapses into a heap and screams in pain from the corrosive substance now boiling in his blood. The three-headed king dies, watching his cattle disappear into the distance with Heracles. The precise location of Erythea is not entirely known to this day, and it is highly disputed amongst historians. However, its name gives some clues to real-world possibilities. Erythea means reddish, which might convey that it was to the far west, where the sun sets into a red sky. Heracles' journey westwards through Spain and Libya would certainly support this claim. An island far west of Europe and Africa might indicate perhaps a landmass off the coast of Portugal, or maybe one of the Canary Islands. To expand the latter, Canary gets its name from Canis, which means dog. Remember that a key character in this story is a two-headed dog. Lanzarote, one of the Canary Islands, can be roughly translated as one that is all okra, and okra is a brownish-red pigment. Heracles mounts the cattle on Helios's goblet and begins his journey back to the European mainland. His journey back to Tyrans, though, is fraught with additional challenges. We'll summarise some of these now. At Lugaria, Heracles encounters two sons of Poseidon, as well as a force of Lugarian soldiers. They attempt to steal Heracles' new cattle, and a large battle ensues. During the fight, Heracles runs out of arrows, and kneels down on the mud with tears in his eyes. The soil is much too soft for stones to throw at his enemy. Zeus, pitying Heracles, calls forth a great rainfall of rocks, and our hero deals a massive destructive blow to the Lugarians. Zeus raises the constellation Engon Nasus as an image of his son after this. Next, on a more comedic note, Heracles walks the entire length of the Italian mainland and then almost reaches Sicily before realising he has taken the wrong road. The Romans state that Heracles is then welcomed by King Evander, formerly of Arcadia. Soon after, the son of Zeus swims to a grassy shore and rests for the night in the open air. Cacus, the son of Hephaestus and Medusa, steals away two of the grandest bulls in the herd as Heracles sleeps he takes them to a nearby cave. In the morning, our hero tracks them all down easily and beats the three-headed fire breather to a pulp. At Regium, a bull flees from the rest of the herd and swims all the way to Sicily. At Sicily, it finds itself in the herd of Eryx, king of the Elymans. Eryx is the son of Aphrodite. Heracles accepts a five-fold contest against the king to retrieve his bull with the added stake that Eryx's kingdom is also a part of the bargain. Heracles bests Eryx, and then kills him in the fifth event to demonstrate the mortality of demigods to his people. He leaves his new kingdom free to do as it pleases, until his descendants decide to one day come and rule there. Heracles is still trying to find his way out of Italy. He next comes to meet King Licinius, who actually succeeds in forcing our hero away from his land. 
Licinius builds a temple to Hera, and Heracles retreats from it in disgust. Just as he's starting to make sense of Italy, and build a plan in his head to escape this confusing country, Hera sends forth a gadfly to subtly annoy Heracles' herd. This is actually a favoured torment of Hera, having done the same to Zeus's lover Io before. The annoying creature plagues Heracles' cattle to the point that they stampede and scatter. They run far and wide in all directions, going as far as Thrace and into the Scythian desert. It takes many months for Heracles to gather together those that he is able to track, but loses a significant number of his cattle across the lands. Our hero finally trots the remaining cattle, around 600 strong, to Tyrants and to the presence of King Eurystheus. Heracles is weary, tired, and understandably not in the best of moods. It's easy then to imagine his immense frustration when the king decides to sacrifice the entire herd to Hera. Heracles takes solace in having completed 10 labours already, and doing so in only 8 years and 2 months. But his next labour is about to begin. That's it, thanks for watching. Thanks for continuing to support us here at Aspect History. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments. As always, I've been Circle Strafe and I'll see you in the next episode. Toodles!